What's up guys, Big D Wiz here, OldSchoolStereo.com. Today we're going to talk about how to turn a server power supply into a 12 volt power supply for your car audio testing. What's up guys, Big D Wiz here, OldSchoolStereo.com. Today we're going to talk about how to turn a server power supply into a 12 volt power supply for your car audio testing. Now, this particular power supply is made for IBM servers. And if you can see that right there at 110 volts input at 12.2 volts, you should get 53.3 amps max. Now, if you're in the UK and you have 200 to 240 volts and you can get 106.5 amps, which is pretty cool. But here in the US, um, most of our outlets that we use on a consistent basis are 110. So this is a 53.3 amp power supply at 12 volts, which is pretty cool. So in order to make this work, we need a couple of components. First off being the power supply. And just so happens, these are pretty inexpensive off of eBay. You can usually get them for around $25 to $30 for this. And, the, and those are brand new. You can probably get used ones even cheaper. This 12 inch toolbox I purchased from Harbor Freight was only $5. Yeah, pretty amazing. And this, this is what we're going to use to house the uh, power supply. And I'm going to show you one that I made. This is kind of my first generation. I've decided on a couple things I'm going to do to make it a little bit better. But as you can see, we've got the minus on this side. <clears throat> we have 10 gauge wire, four 10 gauge wires coming into the single uh, distribution block. We'll be able to hook up four gauge wire or so on the end, even though we probably won't need four gauge for 50 amps. Probably 8 gauge will be fine. And here's the 12 volt plus. Let me turn it around to the side. You can see I drilled some holes here. This is because the power supply has a fan. And we want to make sure that we can get some free flowing air. And this here is for the uh, remote. This will just make it easier so you don't have to put multiple wires in here. You just put your one power wire and then you can use your remote here. Now I'm gonna open it up and show you the inside. And there again, this was version one, so it's kind of messy. But I'll still show you what I got going on here. You can see we've got four wires on each side for positive and four for negative. And they're just soldered in. And let me show you the slots that I used. Orientate this the same way. See, these are just little slots. I put spade connectors in there and I soldered them down. And as you can see, maybe you can, right, let me get something sharp so I can show you. Right here, see how I have these two pins jumped? This is important because in order to make this thing turn on, you have to have these two pins jump together. Now, if, if you're lucky like me and have a lot of old computer parts, then you've probably got some of these sitting around, these little jumpers. This is what they look like. It's just a little uh, pin jumper and they were designed for old IDE drives to do master and slave and things like that. But if you don't have one of those and you have a computer shop near you, I bet they've got probably a ton of these. They give you one because they're you know, pretty much nothing to them. All it does is just jumps the pins together. So in order to make this work, what I have to do is I have to jump these two pins. So there we go. I just slid it in and now we're good to go. So all I'm gonna have to do is solder up each of these and I'm gonna try to make my wiring a little bit neater on the other box. And uh, as you can see, I drilled some holes to push the wire through. The only problem is when I go to close it, it doesn't close really well. I have to kind of force it down. And I'll show you that I drilled holes through here and pop the wires up so they can go into the distribution block. So it, it looks okay, but 
I'm planning to make the other a little bit better and I was just going to show you a little build log of how I did it. All right, the next thing we need to do is get this arm out of the way because when you try to mount this in the box, you want to have the power connector here so it slide up, slides up against the side of the toolbox so you can easily get the power wire in. And this arm is just in the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a screwdriver, I'm gonna pry this up and it'll just pop that rivet out. I'm gonna do that on both sides and I'll be right back. All right, I finally got one side pried out and it took took a lot more force than I remember it taking. So what I just did is use a screwdriver to kind of pry it first. And then I used a pair of pliers and I just twisted as I was pulling and eventually it'll come out. And then the other side, if I remember right, was pretty easy. Of course, it's easy with two hands since I've only got one hand here. I don't know I can do it with one hand. So anyway, I'll put the camera down and go ahead and pop this side out. All right, success. Got both of the... Uh, you can see the little rivets popped out. Didn't cause any damage to the power supply at all. Those are just pop rivets, so they came right out. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to get out my little spade connectors, and I'm going to solder in the wires. But first, I'm going to test fit this into the toolbox. And this time, I'm going to try to run the wires a little bit neater than I did before. And uh, so I'm going to try to get an exact measurement of, of the length that I need before I start soldering and, and cut the wires. So now we're test fitting the uh, power supply in the toolbox. And what I found the best way to put it in is this way. Because when I butt it up against the side here, I'm going to be able to cut out a hole here for the power plug. And as you can see, we have access to the terminals here. And what I use is these little... Um, 10 to 12 gauge spade connectors and I'll show you you can put them in here and they actually snap down pretty well now one problem that I had with the other uh, model that I made is that the wires came up and they were had to make a hard turn so what I'm going to try to do with these is I'm going to try to bend these to a little bit of an angle maybe the first and the last one to a 90 degree and the other ones to a different degree to try to make them fit better that way the wires can lay over and I also thought about maybe using the tray here and just cutting out the part where the um, power supply is. So it'll drop down, you know, kind of around it. Then we can put the power cable here because in the other one, I'm just going to drop the power cable down this side, which it blocks the, you know, the airflow and a lot of the other stuff. And there's something, maybe something else we could put there like a fan. I've got one of these. We could put one of these down there if we really wanted to you know keep it really cool but i'm not sure if i'm gonna do that or not but i think i'm gonna try to cut one of these i've got two of them so we'll just see how it looks so i'll do that next and we'll see how it looks all right i marked some rough estimates here of where i need to cut out and was tired of messing around with the uh you know with one of these so i said hey i'm gonna go ahead and get out the dremel go ahead and do it right guys I mean, I shouldn't have to say this, but really need to use some eye protection when you do this. It's easy to uh, get something in your eye and make you blind. You don't want to do that. So make sure you use eye protection. And we've successfully cut out the little notch. As you can see, the little tray now fits around the power supply. Actually fits around it pretty nice, pretty tight. Not exact here, but hey, good enough for government work. And we'll be able to still cut our notch here. This will be cool because it'll kind of clean it up a little bit, maybe. All right, so next up, I'm going to measure and make sure I've got the lengths of wire properly so I can maybe channel them up this way and come through and keep them tight so I'm not uh, dealing with a lot of extra slack. Same thing on this side. So we'll do that next. All right, so the way this particular toolbox works is it has these little plastic bins, which very neatly slide in here and they lock down. Now, what I did with the other one, as you probably noticed, is I mounted the distribution block inside. And what that required was that I cut out some of this plastic. And I tell you what, this is some of the toughest plastic you can imagine inside this thing. So I have to use my Dremel. I was trying to use just some side cutters to cut it and pry it, but man, it's tough. I'm not sure they could build a building out of that. Super, super tough plastic. But anyway, 
I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna mount it this way and have the uh, have the four 10 gauge coming up through the box and into the distribution block, and I'll have a place for up to a four gauge out. So what we're gonna do next is I'll pull this out and I'll get my Dremel and go ahead and cut this out. And I've also made sort of a template on the top to cut it out so it'll close so I can fit this inside. So I'll be back shortly. And we successfully cut out the, uh, the notches here so we can close this up. And it fits inside snug. Close it up so it snaps. And it slides on. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to open this up. What we're going to do is I'm going to pop two holes that's going to go straight through this plastic piece, also through the box. And that's where we're going to bring the 10 gauge wire up. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill four holes and I'm going to put um, some bolts, and washers, and nuts to hold this in tight because this doesn't need to slide out anymore. The only reason that we even have this on and so it closes up is that I just want to keep it completely um, kind of isolated from the outside when you're not using it. I know it shouldn't really matter, but, you know, that's just how I want to do it. So anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and do the other side Go ahead and match this one up and do this one so I can put the other distribution block in and then I'll drill the holes and then we'll do the wiring and it won't be a whole lot more other than cutting the hole out here and we'll be able to test it. So it's coming right along. All right, we have success with both of the distribution blocks inside of the little um, plastic tool trays here. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna slide, slide these on and we're gonna drill the holes for the 10 gauge wire to come through. That's what we'll do next. All right, as you can see, we have the 3 8 inch holes drilled. We did two on either side and I'll slide it up. You can see that what I did is I just drilled straight through the little plastic tray here and through the top of the toolbox. So that way we can run the wires up through here. So we're getting close getting really close so now what I'm going to do is put the um, power supply back in here and we're going to go ahead and run the 10 gauge wire up and go ahead and connect the distribution block so we'll know how much wire we need to come off um, to solder on to the uh, to the leads there so we're getting close so we've got one side here the positive side all soldered up and the wires, like I said, a little bit neater this time. Got them tie wrapped. Coming up, going right into the old distribution block there. Look pretty clean. The box opens and closes nice, which is a problem I had with the other one. So uh, this is looking nicer. I think this is going to be cool. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. And all I got to do is pop those screws through. And I'm going to have to mount this somehow to the box, to the bottom. I might just use some Gorilla Glue or something to hold it down, but I'll figure that out. So be back shortly. All right, guys, I got a little carried away and I uh, went ahead and did a few other steps before I came back. Obviously, I soldered on the negative side and I went ahead and put some tie wraps up there uh, to make it look nice, some wire ties. And I went ahead and made a hole in the side here. What this is going to be for is the remote. That way you don't have to run it off the same wire that comes out of the top. And I went ahead and drilled some uh, ventilation holes for the fan that's on the power supply. So now all I've got to do is find a way to attach the power supply to the box, which will probably be some kind of epoxy, and hook up the, uh, the strap that I made here. This goes to the... Um, I just soldered a, an extra wire here on the positive side and that's going to give us the 12 volt turn on for the amplifier and we're almost done folks almost there all right guys so i've got the project complete and you can maybe hear the fan running inside so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to show you the voltage there you can see 12.33 and I also try the one here on the side 12.33 that's for the turn on so there she goes she's working
Now let's try with this Kicker ZR240 amp, see how it sounds. All right, we have the Kicker ZR240 hooked up. As you can see, we have power. I'm only using 12 gauge wire because this amp only has a 30 amp fuse. So let me turn the microphone around so you can hear the subwoofers here. These are the JL Audio uh, 8W6s. And here we have another Soundstream Reference 500 testing out the uh, power supply. Seems to be working great. No problems at all. I've been able to crank it up pretty loud. With music, I mean, you, you can play back a lot of amplifiers with music because 50 amps is quite a bit of juice for music. So you could probably get by with, you know, several hundred watt amplifier. Just hook it up and either use it to, you know, use a car amp in your house or just for testing amps. That's what I'm planning on using it for. I know I've already got a bench, but hey, this is nice, a little portable, easy to carry. You can test your amp wherever. If it's too hot in the lab, you can, you can take it inside. So anyway, this is Big D Wiz, old school stereo.com. Back with another project or amp test or something else cool soon. I'm out of here!